Hi, I'm here with Barbara. Um, can you tell me about your book, Barbara? I certainly can. It's taken me a while to write this. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with Greece in the 70s when I was hitchhiking around Europe. Mm -hmm. got off the boat in Corfu, mm -hmm. which is on the west coast I've of Greece. been there. It's gorgeous. Have you? Yes. It's fantastic. Yes. But, you know, I've been traveling all over Europe, and I just got off the boat, and I thought, I've landed in my native home. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever had a feeling like that. Yes, absolutely. That's how I feel about New York. Is it? Okay. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes. So you may have migrated here from somewhere else. No, I've always lived here. But, but I, you know you're I, at home. I, I do, and I, I absolutely love traveling. And Greece, is a, Corfu is absolutely gorgeous. I've been there before. Yeah, you, yes. And, you know, Corfu is, is just one of many faces of Greece. Mm -hmm. It's the most extraordinary place. Just I really found my home there. Mm -hmm. And I travel there a lot. I have a mm -hmm. house there now on oh. a little Greek island. Very nice. much like... The, a bit like the small Greek island mm -hmm. in this story, but it's the, I think it's probably a combination of people who are so sweet and mm -hmm. welcoming and also very very idiosyncratic and special yes. in their own yes. way. I also love the food. Yes. I even love the wine. I love mm -hmm. the wine. I even love Retsina, which is um, really the poor stepsister of Greek wines. Mm -hmm. And I'm not at all sure it doesn't. It may prove reincarnation, actually. <laughs> because I, I've never met anybody that wasn't Greek who really loved Retsina the way I do. In fact, mm -hmm. we're creating a, a cocktail called the Tempestini here this evening, oh. based on Cafe Tempest, which is an attempt to glorify a wine which is otherwise has a really poor reputation. And mm -hmm. it's fantastic. Uh -huh. So that's one thing. What is your book about? The book is yes. a story of a 30-something American theatrical producer. Oh. Is it bi autobiographical? Well, it's called a fictional memoir. Okay. There's certainly a lot of Sarah in the author, mm -hmm. but I think there are also all the characters in the book contain a bit of Sarah. Okay. It's kind of my philosophy of writing that if the characters aren't real, no one's going to believe them, care about mm -hmm. them, or read beyond about the third page. Right. So even though I call it a fictional memoir, of course there's a lot of my own heart and philosophy in this book. Okay, that's great. Well, so it's about li about being on, living in Greece. It's about spending one summer on mm -hmm. a small Greek island mm -hmm. that's rather remote. What um, is the name of the island? You said it's near Pharos. Pharos? Okay. It's a fictional island. Uh -huh. It's um, a place where ice cubes are still being test marketed and doctors have the right of way. Really? So it's, <laughs> Interesting. it's, it's a bit primitive. <laughs> uh, it's full of delightful characters. Is it supposed to take place in the present? It takes place in the late 90s, okay. as a matter of fact. And it's... Um, what really happens to this character, she goes there to relax and, and um, get over a, a love affair with a guy who she works with in London as a theatrical producer. Mm -hmm. And she's asked by the doctor, who happens to also be the island's impresario, if she'll direct the summer play. So she agrees. Uh -huh. uh, rather foolishly, she's never done anything like that before, but it's part of her philosophy to try new things. Uh -huh. And so she picks Shakespeare's The Tempest. Uh -huh. And the the main plot of the story really is the unfolding of rehearsals and the, all the characters who are all local, of course, and have never acted before. Mm -hmm. And so they find themselves, you know, it's a cab driver, Caliban, and it's a fisherman, Prospero, and mm -hmm. all the great characters in the Tempest. So they have a fantastic time. The only problem she discovers is there's only one female character in the Tempest. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a really a playful of guys. So what happens during rehearsals is that all the girlfriends, wives, sisters of the actors become involved by bringing food to the rehearsals, which is, it gives you a real feeling for what life really is like mm -hmm. on a Greek guy. So in fact, the play becomes what I call a feast in four acts. A feast? That sounds great. So it's called Cafe Tempest, and where can people purchase the book? And can, uh, I show, can you show the book? I can show you the book. It has six fabulous recipes. It might be better. So tell, can you tell me about uh, when, where people can well, buy the first book? You can pre-order it on Amazon. Okay. Com. It's also available from my website, which okay. is www.barbaraboncaley.com. Great. And it's going. Its official publication date is June 15th. And sure. It's coming out in soft cover and hard cover. Oh, that's wonderful. And the hard cover 
is, um, it's quite beautiful, actually. It's the blue of, of, of the island. Mm -hmm. And the soft cover I'm calling the Beach Edition because it's a very funny book, I think, and a great summer read. Oh, great. So right. if you can't afford to go to Greece this summer, right. you can certainly open these pages. That's great. Do you ever talk about any of the food of, of Greece, like um, some of the famous pastries of Greece? Oh, the absolutely. Book? There's a fabulous baklava. Baklava. That's my favorite thing in okay, the world. you're going to like this a lot. <laughs> really? There's a recipe? Absolutely. Oh, it's terrific. Fantastic. Alina's baklava. Oh, that's great. What about the little um, green cookies that are, they're like, I um, forget what it's called. Ooh, Do you know what I'm talking about? It's yes, there's one that's made with uh, pistachio. A lot of pistachios. Yeah. The hallmark of Greek pastries is all the nuts. Right, in right. In fact, uh, you have to be a nut to really enjoy mm -hmm. yeah, this kind of stuff. So you have recipes for that as well in the yep, book? Yeah, there's that. There are, and of course, all through the book, people are either acting or eating. Those are the main activities in the book. Oh, that's great. And there's also a, a very interesting love affair. Oh. The real art of, of discovery in this book, not unlike the play love. Uh-huh. And They're very handsome men in Greece, that's for sure. There are very gorgeous guys in Greece. Yes. And also some very beautiful women. Okay. And really, I think the story behind the story of this book is what I'm calling the enlightened heart. Mm -hmm. Oh. I, I really believe that you love who you love. Mm -hmm. Right. And another line from this book, if I, may, I happen to remember, is if your lovers don't become your friends, right. you're dancing on a dark stage. Right. So it it's, sounds like a great book. I think people will. I hope people enjoy it. It's already gotten some wonderful reviews. Oh, that's great. And and there's a there's a short synopsis on the back to tantalize people. Okay. Mostly, I think you know, it really is a celebration of grief and a celebration of love. Mm -hmm. I think those two things well, sounds like a great much go together. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on your book and. People need to go to Amazon.com and your website to buy it. Absolutely. So, okay. okay, well, I hope all Corinne's Corner readers will go and do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.